Okay. Good morning, second graders. Welcome to my house again. I'm glad I could be with you, at least via video. Uh, today I'd like to do something a little different in starting and because one of my favorite things that I always like to do when I'm with you is to go around and pick out my favorite dessert of the day. But since I am not there with you, uh, I thought maybe we could reverse that. And I put out a few desserts uh, that I like, and you could pick your favorite of what I put out. So I have uh, chocolate donuts, which uh, I don't have any left because I ate most of them. I have a, a fruit pie, a berry pie that I had yesterday, and I have Mrs. Lecce's cherry pie, which I'll eat today. And then I have some chocolate chip, chip cookies that my wife made yesterday when I thought we were gonna video yesterday, but uh, I'll finish those off today. And for those uh, people who prefer uh, non-sweets, I have an apple and a nectarine, which I also like very much. So if you would, pick out your favorite dessert for me today and let Mrs. Lecce know, and then she can tell me uh, which one I should eat first. So thank you for that. Today we have a new story. It's called uh, Worm's Teeth. And I bet you have never heard about Worm's Teeth, but this is an interesting story of encouragement. Mother knew that something had gone wrong just as soon as Martha came in the back door. Something seemed to tell her that the examination results had been announced and Martha wasn't on the list. Yet she did not like to say anything for fear of what might happen. Any news, she asked cautiously. Only bad news, said Martha, turning her head away and going upstairs. In a few moments, Mother followed her as she, half expected, found Martha weeping in her room. The exam, asked Mother sympathetically. Martha nodded. I tried so hard, she said. It was terrible to have failed. What shall I do? I feel like giving up on everything. I simply can't go back to school. And with that, Martha broke into a fit of sobbing that made Mom want to cry as well. Martha said, Mother, after a while, you don't need to feel so bad about it. I know you work so very hard, and it's just a pity that things have come out this way. But there isn't a time when we don't have discouragement about failing an exam. Not everybody passes every time. If everybody did, then the examiners would just make the examinations harder so someone would fail. The best thing is to cheer up and resolve to try again. Oh, I don't want to, said wailed Martha. I shall never be any good anyway. You mustn't say that, said Mother. Why, some of the greatest men and women that ever lived were dreadful dunces at school. Some of them failed at their examinations over and over again. It isn't the fact of failing that matters, but whether or not we give up because we failed. If after every failure we can set our will to try again, then victory is bound to come someday and nothing will be impossible for us. Still Martha wept on. It's no good, she sobbed. Other people may be able to do that, but I can't. I just don't want to take any exam ever again. Martha said mother, suddenly changing her line of approach. Have you ever heard of the worm's teeth? Hmm. Worm's teeth, repeated Martha, the first sign of a smile flickering across her face. Worm's teeth? What do you mean, mother? And what has it to do with that wretched exam? Well, said mother, they have a whole lot to do with it. If you will pass me your Bible, I will read you all about them. There you are, said Martha, passing her Bible to her mom with another faint smile, but you won't find any worm's teeth in there. You wait a minute, said Mother, turning the pages rapidly until she found the 41st chapter of Isaiah. Now listen, she said, I'm going to read verse 10, first of all. There we have this beautiful promise of help in times of discouragement. Fear not. 
for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isn't that beautiful? But again, in verse 13, we have these comforting words. I, the Lord your God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. I will help thee. Evident, evidently, God was trying to encourage his people not to give up, not to despair because things had gone wrong. Then went on, Mother, in verses 14 and 15, we read this extraordinary expression, Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shalt make the hills like chaff. Now I see the worm, Steve, smile, Martha. Yes, said Mother, isn't it a wonderful, inspiring promise? God knew that his people were feeling as small and worthless as worm and thinking that they didn't count for anything at all. So he said, cheer up, trust in me and try again, and I will give you the teeth strong enough to eat mountains. I never saw that in the Bible before, exclaimed Martha. It's a bit cheery, isn't it? I should say, said, Mar uh, said Mother, and I believe it was put there to encourage us just now. God bring us all sorts of experiences in life to test and try us, but never to discourage us. He wants us to triumph over these seeming disasters. Every time we do so, we shall grow stronger and stronger. We shall develop teeth of such power that they will bite through any size mountain, biggest mountain around of difficulty that may ever rise up in front of us. Mother said, Martha breaking in, do you know what I've been thinking? I think I can guess, said Mother, but I'm not sure. Well, said Martha, I just wish I could take that next exam tomorrow. And with that, I leave you today with that sort of encouragement that God gives us, even in spite of all that's going on in the world around us, and the fact that we can't even be together for a while. But there one day we will be, and then we can enjoy desserts together and God's promises. So you have a great day. God loves you, and so do I, and so does Mrs. Lawrence, and we hope to see you soon. Bye now.